Hi, and thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry and this video about flexible dust collection system piping. I know that this doesn't look like a video set up to talk about dust collection piping, but that's kind of the whole point. Right now, the shop is set up as a paint shop. I stained and lacquered all the pieces to a TV console cabinet that I built. A month ago, I was in here building a log bench. You can see a picture of it there. That involved uh, cutting steel with a cutting torch, steel fabrication, welding, and log work. Just last week, this whole thing was set up as a cabinet shop when I was making this TV cabinet, uh, doors and all. And in another couple weeks, uh, it's going to go back to steel, welding, and fabrication, making some roller stands, etc. And so I included a little play on words in the video title because not only is the ducts uh, collection system piping flexible. Using flex pipe means the whole system is flexible. I can convert this shop from a cabinet shop to a paint shop, park a truck in here, turn it to a welding shop, and use it for a YouTube video production studio. And at any time along the way, I can have a dust collection system hooked up and operational for whatever work I'm doing at the time. And I'm well aware that this is a very non-conventional dust collection setup, but I think that the next level carpentry shop is fairly unconventional too because of its versatility. This Gyro Air G700 dust collector that I got uh, from Harvey Industries about 18 months ago is the first dust collector I've ever had and I brought it into this shop and had to make it functional. So I talked to the folks at Air Handling who work with Harvey Industries on their uh, dust collection systems and got a a setup to get started with, some flex hose, some fittings, uh, some connectors, etc., so that I could put this system to use and get to work. In the year and a half since I got the dust collector and put it to use, I've kind of figured out some things about the configuration and the fittings to make this all flow a lot better, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So I'm going to clear the paint project off the work surface over there, and then I'll pop open this box of fittings and components from Air Handling Systems and show you how I integrate those into the system. I don't want to talk a lot about the mechanics of it, I just want to show you some of the options that I've selected to give you an idea of some of the options that are out there. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't have a dedicated wood shop, but you still want to do dedicated woodwork in your shop. And I think breaking out of the paradigm of rigid overhead or underfloor ductwork into a system like this can be a great solution for a lot of non-typical, unconventional shops and workflows. And now I'll get to the fun part. Opening up a box, it's just like Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas in uh, August? <laughs> <laughs> and check this out. The guys at Air Handling Systems threw in a free cap and a free t-shirt along with all these fittings. How cool is that? While I'm opening the box, I'll add this caveat for clarification by telling you that flex duct is no substitution for rigid metal pipe because smooth pipe offers far less resistance than the ribbed inside of flex pipe. I don't know what the factor is, but one foot of flex duct has far more resistance than one foot of smooth metal pipe. So in ductwork system design, it makes a lot of sense to keep the flex duct to a minimum. In a small shop like mine, where hard metal pipe isn't an option, I compensate by making the runs much shorter, and they're all horizontal. So the system still operates efficiently, despite far more resistance for this type of pipe. I'll get these things unpacked, and then go through one by one what the fittings are, why I got them, and what they do. Nothing but wrapping paper left here. Most of these fittings are set up so that I can interchange each end of each hose. All the connections, these QD fittings, which are exclusive to air handling systems, have a male and a female end, and they're joined by these spring catches. And those allow me to quickly attach and detach pieces of hose uh, from equipment or from branch fittings in the system. The large QD here is for hooking the main duct right to the dust processor because that needs to come on and off. And then the various other pieces 
I got so that I can have different lengths of flex hose and collect them together. Depending on where the saw position is, if I'm cutting uh, 12 foot material, I have to move the saw that way. Closer to the dust processor, the hose gets shorter. So I can use a six, piece, six foot piece of hose or a four foot piece of hose or combine them together and have a 10 foot piece. That's what these various fittings are for. Um, like I said, so that each end of each hose uh, can come off and be switched around and interchanged. So that, that's one unique fitting there. Then um, this big one here is one of the main pieces I needed to make this setup more efficient because most of the time I've got a sharp 90 degree bend in the flex hose right next to the machine which really drops the efficiency right out of the gate. Uh, this last piece is a special dust chute made for uh, my molder and I'll show you what that looks like installed. But that's a full selection. Uh, I will say about these, you can see these are labeled to fit over flex hose, uh, to fit in machines, etc. Because the inside, and out uh, the inside and outside diameters of all these fittings are really crucial uh, to make them airtight and uh, to make them interchangeable. The fittings that come on machines uh, and the male and female um, ends of the various fittings all vary uh, slightly. Sometimes it's just the thickness of the metal. And Air Handling Systems has the capability of expanding or shrinking that um, diameter inside or outside to get a nice snug fit. And that's something that you work through in the process of ordering fittings to make sure everything fits just like it should. And all those inside and outside diameters are made for a specific purpose and location. Uh, you can't see it very well, but uh, this is for bandsaw. I had the inside diameter of this, made it up to the outlet uh, dust port connector on the bandsaw. So that's a nice snug fit. I'll silicone that and screw it on. And then it has the female side of the connector so that I can take any one of the hoses with the male end and just hook it up to the bandsaw uh, wherever the bandsaw happens to be parked and I can hook up the bandsaw and the planer or the table saw or whatever uh, all in whatever position they are because of the versatility of these extra fittings and extra um, stepped lengths of hose. This is something that uh, air handling system does routinely uh, make this fittings with just a few um, maybe a half inch difference in circumference to fit these different fittings nice and snug so they're not loose and so that you don't have to pound them on. That's a wonderful thing working with those guys. And this assortment of adapters, connectors, and fittings allows me to keep my flexible ductwork system flexible. This is how the setup I currently have uh, is hooked to the machine. I've just got a hose clamp around this fitting here and that's worked fine up until now, but um, the flex hose has more resistance than steel pipe and a 90 has way more resistance than straight pipe. So a flex hose 90 creates a huge amount of unnecessary re um, friction uh, against air movement right in the first 18 inches out of the machine. So I wanted to upgrade that uh, to get better airflow all the way through. The first length of pipe right off the dust processor leads to this pant Y that I use so that I can operate two machines at the same time. Each leg of the pant Y can run to a different machine and right now I've got it set up for the table saw and the joiner. And this setup is actually uh, quite functional uh, mainly because of the 1100 CFM at an 18 inch water column generated by the G700 dust processor and the short runs of this tube. But like I said, I want to optimize this uh, to make sure I'm getting as much suction as I can. And I also want to make this a little more versatile so that everything comes apart. Right now, you saw the hose clamp on the machine. I've got to unclamp the hose clamp to remove that. And I'm part way to where I need to go down here on the pant Y because the six inch feed into the Y is removable. But there again, I've got hose clamps holding these two runs of four inch flex pipe to the other legs of the pant Y. And this has been working fine, but it's not ideal. And what I've determined uh, over the time I've used the machine is it'd be much more convenient to have quick di disconnect on these two hoses. And the main reason for that is because of their length. 
Right now, uh, I've got an 8 foot on this side and a 10 foot on that side, but sometimes I need 12 feet on one side and only 4 on the other. So I want to make um, quick disconnects here and then have more varied lengths of tubing so I can switch and swap all this stuff around quicker and easier. But ultimately, when I'm doing any function in the shop that doesn't involve dust collection, I want to be able to disassemble all these components, store them off to the side, and just have a clean open floor uh, to work in, which uh, kind of optimizes the workflow. And I'm probably being redundant here, but uh, over the period of time that I've had the dust processor in this shop and used it for all different sort of operations, uh, it kind of dawned on me after a while that a mix and match plug and play system of ducts and fittings uh, is going to be the best way to set up for each individual operation that I'm doing and have the flexibility to use any machine in any location at any time. So that's what all these extra fittings are for is to eliminate hose clamps and give me more setup and configuration options. As I said earlier, I'm not going to get into a lot of the mechanics of this setup, but I'm going to start off right here at the machine and switch out things. And I want to show you one thing that's really important in planning, designing, and purchasing uh, custom ductwork. My goal uh, here was to eliminate this hose clamp by using a quick disconnect fitting. And these are available in all different diameters. Um, you can see that they've labeled this gyro inlet. I gave them the outside dimension of this uh, fitting here and they made the inside dimension of this to match it. That's all well and good. It fits fine. Uh, on this side of the quick disconnect fitting, uh, and this is a six inch one, they make four inches and any size you need, but this will fit into this hose, hose clamp here, and then I can just connect and disconnect this uh, hose from here if I have to clean out this uh, safety grill in here uh, if it gets clogged up with, with flakes of wood or stringy wood. So that's the intent. We have quick disconnect capability. And the point I want to make is that there's a lot of details that go into ordering these fittings and it's embarrassing to say but in the fog of war I specified my elbow fitting wrong. My intent was to have uh, be able to either hook up the straight six inch flex or hook up the elbow and then hook up the six inch flex to here. So I could either disconnect the hose from the elbow or the, from the machine and do all the switching around. But uh, in the fog of war, uh, I had this fitting made with this reducer to four inch. And with that configuration, I can only run one machine at a time. So um, it's flat out wrong. I was hoping I could just tell you this in a comment to pay attention uh, to the configuration of things you order. Uh, but I have to show you in real life that I, uh, well, basically I screwed up and now I've got to uh, deal with this fitting uh, to get a different collar put on the end. But when it's all said and done, there'll be a quick disconnect here and the hose will connect to that. That gets me out of the machine with this very robust, smooth steel, um, welded steel pipe elbow. And it is just a quick disconnect fitting setup that'll work great. And once I've got the right fitting on the end of this elbow, then I can have different lengths of this um, initial six inch flex duct. I'll probably have uh, like a three footer and a six footer that can connect together. And so if I park this machine over there uh, for whatever reason to give more room in the shop, I can add more of this hose or take it out so I don't have so many S curves in there. So that's a little bit embarrassing, but it's the reality and uh, I've, I've just got to deal with it. Uh, but before I move on, I, I do want to clarify this fitting is built exactly like I asked for it. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked for the four inch reducer, but this is all solid steel welded. It's robust and uh, the guys at Air Handling System will, uh, you know, do whatever. If you want this to split into two fours here, if you want this to flare, have six different outlet ports, they can do anything you ask for. But 
once you ask for it, that's what you're going to get. So pay attention so you don't end up in the embarrassing position I'm in right now. To modify this elbow, I just clamp it in my bench habit and make successive cuts around the circumference of the reducer fitting. Keeping this elbow clamped and secure is a little awkward, but it's completely doable. I chose to use these Graph Black blades to perform the cuts on this duct modification. A guy named Alex at Graph sent me these to try out in the shop. I've had them around for a while and this is actually the first time I'm using these because I don't do that much cutting of thin sheet metal. These blades are diamond and not abrasive, so they don't produce a lot of odor when making these cuts the way that abrasive blades do. The fact that there's diamond fused to the edges of a steel disc mean that the blades remain a consistent diameter during the cut because they don't wear away like the abrasive types do. It's important to let the diamonds do the cutting and to not force the cut. A diamond blade requires a cooling cycle and these blades are meant to use 50 seconds out of 60 with a 10 second cooling period in between. They're fast cutting and the cut is pretty smooth. Not quite as smooth as some of the abrasive blades I've used, but plenty smooth that they're not a deal breaker because it's easy to remove the burr with a flap disc or a deburring tool. And the fact that it's not burning the metal like an abrasive blade doesn't produce that blue haze of smoke in the shop that I get when I'm doing a lot of cutting with abrasive blades. Once I've got the reducer removed, I notch the remaining band of reducer fitting metal into little tabs and take a pair of pliers to flex those tabs back and forth until they break off. And when I'm done breaking off all those little tabs by repeatedly bending them, I'm left with nothing but a bead of weld around the circumference of the six inch pipe. Next, I unpacked the special delivery box from Air Handling Systems because I had to order another six inch fitting with a female collar so I could weld it onto this elbow, which is actually what I should have ordered in the first place. They sent me the fitting in a standard length, but because I want to keep the overall length of the 90 degree fitting to a minimum, I trimmed a bit over an inch off this female collar with that graft blade again for a nice clean cut. Next, I ground away the weld as completely as I could down to the pipe itself using a regular quarter inch by five inch grinding disc. To get a cleaner weld, I removed the galvanized coating off of the fittings with an 80 grit flap disc before positioning the elbow and the female collar in the orientation I want for this fitting. With everything in place and a couple magnets to hold them there, I added a few tack welds around the perimeter and then put the whole fitting on the floor so that I could stitch weld the collar to the elbow. That's what I'm doing in this sequence. It's not pretty because there's a little residual galvanizing on here, it's thin sheet metal, and I'm not that good of a welder, but it'll be adequate for my purposes, although it's far from air handling's quality control thresholds. For me, it's adequate and functional. Everyone knows even straight flex duct consumes CFM and static pressure in a dust collection system like a sumo wrestler at an all-you-can-eat buffet. So replacing a 90 degree bend in flex duct with this wide sweep smooth pipe bend will be a significant boost in performance and efficiency for my G700, which makes it well worth the investment of time and money to upgrade. Once I was done welding, I ground the weld seam smooth off camera. This is embarrassing enough as it is without showing my stitch welding on galvanized sheet metal because it ain't ready for prime time. It just fortifies the point that I'm more of a grinder than a welder. Once I had the weld ground to where it was acceptable to me, I finished it up with that 80 grip flat disc to smooth everything out. And then I followed up with a coat of gray primer and a couple coats of silver paint for an acceptable fit and finish on this piece. Naturally, all the work that I had to do to reconfigure this 90 to remove the four inch reducer and get it just to a, a standard female six inch uh, fitting on here was the toughest part of all these uh, upgrades and adaptations. Uh, but now that I have that done, I'll go through the connections that I've got going on here. And the first one is adapting this uh, female QFD to the inlet port of the dust processor. I'm undoing a thumb screw here so I can show you what this looks like. The inlet port is heavy gauge steel and so I just took the female fitting here and lined it up and then drilled and tapped a hole through this sheet metal flange into that to the intake flange on the machine. Then I can just use a quarter 20 thread to hold this piece in place. There's not a lot of threads in those two layers of sheet metal but there's plenty to hold this fitting on securely so that I don't have to worry about it. If it ever gets to be a problem, I could weld a nut on the inside to give more uh, screw threads for that thumb screw, but it works fine this way. The other thing you'll notice is that there's um, little clamp ears at the nine o'clock and three o'clock position and also five o'clock and 11 o'clock. The fitting comes standard with two and I added a couple extras. The reason I added these two additional clips was to accommodate the 90 degree elbow and I don't want it to sit 
horizontally like this. If I did, I would have oriented these uh, clips at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, but I rotated it slightly like this to give this a downward angle. And now when I hook up the pant Y like this, the fittings go together nicely because these clips are in the horizontal position. And that's uh, not a right way and a wrong way to do it. It's just that, uh, the best way for my setup. It allows me the flexibility uh -huh, of uh, using flex hose directly or this 90. Now this way the chips flow horizontally across the floor with a gentle rise into the 90 and on into the machine. I've used it a little bit tonight earlier with some stuff and uh, it works pretty sweet. So that's what this set of connections looks like and works like and it'll function as intended and if you order the fittings right in the first place you can save yourself a bunch of trouble because it'll all just go together like that and I could have specified these extra ears on this fitting but I didn't really think that through enough to order the parts that way but it's easy enough to modify them with these fittings and the various little uh, components that go on here. This is as bad a time as any to bust in with some routine channel business so I'll make this as quick and painless as possible. All I need to do is ask you to subscribe, to poke the thumbs up button, and to follow links in the video description for ductwork from air handling systems, for tools and supplies that you see in these videos from Amazon, to head over to Teespring for swag like t-shirts and posters, or to the Starbond website for a great deal on their CA glue products. Last but not least, don't forget Patreon if you want access to the library of patron-only videos produced by Next Level Carpentry. Thank you for any and all support. Now. Back to the flexible ductwork upgrade video already in progress. As you already saw here at the pant Y, the six inch pipe already has a quick disconnect into the fitting so that I can remove it from the rest of the pipe network. I've got a few extra lengths of this uh, heavy duty uh, flex hose from Air Handling Systems. And I'll make a note here that this is an anti-static uh, plastic, whatever this material is. So you'll notice that I don't have any ground wires running on any of this and I just don't have static built up anywhere. This is extra heavy duty, um, almost too heavy in some instances. It's a little harder to work with, uh, but because I got this stuff laying around the, on the floor, this stuff is really sturdy. If I accidentally step on it, it doesn't crush it flat. And it's, uh, it would take a long time to wear it through from rubbing around on the floor. So it's an excellent product. And uh, if you have a demanding situation, you can request this, this tubing uh, at extra cost, but it has extra performance. Um, what I'm saying here, all this for is because I have uh, more of these fittings because I'll end up having a selection of different lengths of this pipe. Like I said, I've got an eight and a 10. I'll probably make a four um, and a couple other lengths so that um, that I could switch this out. I don't have to have a full eight feet running from that that pant Y over here. I can just snap in a shorter piece. That's what the extra fittings are for. Uh, it gets a male male end on one end of this and a female on the other and it's all lined up so that it can always go from uh, this fitting to a piece of equipment. And because I want to be able to completely isolate this uh, pant Y fitting and the two blast gates, I want to switch this hose clamp for another quick disconnect fitting. And this flange on this side is specially sized to fit inside that flexed ductwork there. So I'll take this collar off, slip this on, and then I'll have quick disconnect for both of these pieces of hose so that I can switch and mix and match whatever needs to be done with them. Changing out the permanent connections on the pant Y was simply a matter of drilling out pop rivets and switching the fittings from a direct connector to this quick change connector. This type of permanent connection can be backed up with silicone to prevent leakage 100%. Cutting even this heavy duty anti-static flex hose is simple. I just use a sharp snap blade knife to cut the plastic all around and a pair of diagonal cutters to snip the wire. I put a little inward kink in the end of the wire so it doesn't get caught on things as I move it around the shop and then insert the fitting and tighten the hose clamp. Each fitting and connection has its own set of requirements but they're all pretty straightforward. 
adding a male fitting to the end of a piece of flex hose is just a matter of slipping the fitting into the hose and tightening the hose clamp. You want to keep the alignment of the spring clamps in mind because you're not able to twist this hose while installing it. So I try to keep them all horizontal when the hose is laying flat on the floor. Switching permanent fittings to quick change couplers provides a wide range of options because swapping out hose lengths can be done in seconds. And hose sections of excess length can be just stored out of the way for future use on other projects with other setups. And I want to show you one more custom fitting that I got with this batch of upgrades and it's for my molding machine. The original uh, dust collection fitting that came with this was basically a piece of glorified uh, HVAC ductwork for a house. Uh, it had a four inch port on here, but because I didn't have a dust collector at the time, I just cut that port off and this was just a, a chip deflector and I would let the chips pile up on the floor. But uh, now that I've got an official dust collector, uh, I upgraded this fitting and I'll show you what I got from Air Handling Systems. This piece of sheet metal is held onto the cast iron chip deflector with three machine screws. And as you can see, there's not much to this chip deflector. But the three screw holes are a great way of attaching the sheet metal to the cast iron. So uh, working with the guys at Air Handling Systems, we came up with this duct. I think it's six inches by four inches. And then it has a chute that's offset at 45 degrees. Uh, this is heavier gauge sheet metal and um, it'll serve the same purpose except now I have uh, a female fitting on the end that I can hook up any one of those pieces of four inch flex to and this fitting because of the way it's designed can be either mounted this way, get the chips going like that or just by having another set of holes I can deflect the chips over this way if it helps with the setup in the shop. But this machine and this setup is one where I'll likely have to clip two sections of uh, the four inch flex duct together to get from the dust collector to where the machine is located. And because both ends of all my hoses have male fittings and the machines have female fittings, if I want to splice two hoses together, I've got this little makeup section here and it goes female to female so I can extend uh, the four inch hose um, to as long as I want. But with these adaptations, again, I'm able to use the molder when and where I need it and then just disassemble the system when I switch to another operation. I'm going to jump in here as my future self with an update upgrade and show you my final version of the female to female hose segment connector fitting. The flex hose I had between these two female fittings was unnecessary, so I just eliminated it. I put a small metal sleeve in its place and pop riveted the whole thing together for better form and better function. I'm sure that air handling already makes, or they certainly could make one of these adapter fittings, but I want to show you what a bit of imagination and determination can do. To adapt the new fitting to the old holes, I merely transferred the marks from one piece to the other with a Sharpie marker. and then used my trusty Whitney punch to punch in the screw holes in the sheet metal. If you've not used a Whitney punch, you'll be amazed at how well this tool works when you need holes in sheet metal. Nice clean holes with no cutting oil, no burrs, and no wandering drill bit. Never seen a Phillips screw starter before? Well, now you have. Pretty sweet little tool. And as you can see, attaching a piece of flex duct is a breeze. And I'm not implying that I'll use uh, the dust collection system in this orientation, but you can see the versatility of the various hoses and fittings and the way they're set up really allows me to be flexible with how I set this up for whatever workflow I've got going at any particular time. That covers the main points of this flex duct system upgrade that I wanted to show you. 
So I hope you saw or learned a few things from what I showed you here that will help you plan, design, or upgrade the FlexTuck system in your workspace. And I'll wrap this up with a shout out to the Patreon patrons who've gone above and beyond to support video production here at the channel. All the current active patrons are listed here as a token of my appreciation for their support. So thanks to each and every one of you. I appreciate it. I'm working on a plan for a flex hose storage rack that will keep all these various pieces, parts, neat, organized, and accessible when they hang from the ceiling back there. But that'll have to wait for a future video because it'll take a while to finalize the design, get it built and installed. So stay tuned for that. I'd be ungratefully remiss without a special shout out to Mr. Kurt Corum of Harvey Industries and the gang at Air Handling Systems for all that knowledge, help, assistance, and insight that they provided to make this video possible. Those guys bring a lifetime of experience and knowledge to the table when I ask questions about what I wanted to accomplish and how I wanted things set up. So thanks a bunch, guys. You're the best. And so, as always, to viewers everywhere around the world, until next time, thanks for watching. I know, I know, it's time to go. But it's taken so long to get my ducts in a row. But now that I'm done, I'll have you know that I'm grateful to you for watching this show.